Thank you. Uh, I, I put up this this uh, presentation just to highlight the problems that we have, and uh, I'm happy that uh, our senior colleague, Professor Sanji Kani, as he gives the state of the art later on, maybe he'll shed light on this difficult problem that we have had in this country. Uh, in general, we know that pelvic fractures are common associated with high speed injuries. It is trauma, usually from falls from compressive forces, and of course, it can be mild, moderate, or quite severe. And uh, we normally use a pelvic ring to determine actually the stability of the fractures. And if there are more than two or more pelvic fractures, you can actually say it is. If there are less than two fractures, you can say it's simple. But sometimes, of course, you know that sometimes the fractures can be compound. And uh, of course, you may have other organ injuries. And uh, you see, when you have injuries, the pelvis, do not forget the abdomen, because the abdomen may also, may also have fractured splints, you know, hemoperitoneum. And if you look down, you may also find other things like the vaginal injury also coming in. And in Kenya today, you remember at one time, we have been number one in the world in terms of road traffic accidents. That is statistics in the last few, in the, in the last few, 2013, we had about 3,000 deaths caused by road traffic accidents. And of those 3,000, there are about another 7,000 victims, or even up to 10,000 victims who have been injured in the process. And among those 7,000, you can see you have pelvic injuries. And uh, you realize that the people who go to work on these vehicles, they usually the Nissan, the Nissan minibuses, 14 seaters, you see, uh, usually the young males, and, and uh, they were the ones that really affected. And some years back, in our ward, we were having up to, in, in the orthopedic ward, we were having so many patients coming with fracture pelvis. And it was very difficult for us even to manage them. And we struggled, and me and my colleague, and uh, the other colleagues here in, the, in all the units, we saw very many of them. Of course, the private sector will not see as many as the general, uh, the, the national, uh, the, the government hospitals. Of course, now with the the onset of the motorbikes now becoming taxis, we are having more head injuries than uh, and, and peripheral, you know, the skeletal fractures as compared to pelvic injuries. But we still, yeah. So we have uh, these statistics to to have a look at and. Uh, you see, the, the urologists also are not many, like I think we're about 35 now, and you can see to handle these patients is quite a challenge. So basically, when you look at pelvic injuries, you are going to look at the patient coming with after trauma, he has not passed urine, and, uh, and uh, you have to have been acute urine tension. When you examine, you may find a bit of you know, bleeding around the urethra, and uh, somebody may even have tried to catheterize and tells you the catheter has not got, got a name. And he comes with abdominal fullness or strobic fullness, and you know that he has fracture pelvis. Also, look at do triage and know what else needs to be done. Let us not just focus on the pelvis and miss out life threatening issues like rupture, pain, you know, and the like. So, we must look at that. And for the female, sometimes, other than rectal injuries, we also have vaginal injuries. We had one such case with, uh, with such. Uh, when you come to the retro anatomy, I think here we are going to concentrate more in the male than in the female because this is more male problem than a female problem. And you find that uh, the prostatic urethra is four centimeters long and surrounded by the prostate, except in the first part, the first part of the prostatic, where it is the where the, the internal sphincter you have uh, the pre-prostatic urethra. Then, of course, there's a membranous, there's a prostatic, then there's a membranous urethra, and, you, and this is more susceptible to trauma. <coughs> and uh, the membranous urethra is more susceptible to trauma, but when you come to the anterior, the, the anterior urethra, you find that the papospagiosis supports the urethra and protects it, so you have less of issues. Next one. So this is a, an MCG. And uh, you can see that the prostatic urethra will be up there. This is the rest of the prostatic urethra. And here is a membranous urethra of what? And that is the valve. 
that is the normal picture. Of course, you can see a part of the process, you know, in that case. So then, for you to look at, stru at structures, you have to look at the SIU, the, the SIU program that was in Morocco. And they came up with a, a number of, there is a big, we have a big, big book that was given by SIU. And we have all these things that uh, talk about. And therefore, you can look at the perfect ring in terms of predicting the severity of the damage. And also remember in our anatomy that the children below six years, the bladder is still in the, in the abdomen. And therefore, when you have injuries to these children, you may have also have severe bladder neck injuries as compared to just the uh, urethroid injuries. And then there are types that you can look at, type A fractures, where it will be a, a stable pelvis. Then type B, there will be vertical stable fractures, and type C will be rotational instability and vertical instability because you are also going to injure the, the pelvic rim. So you look at the, if you look at the trauma to the pelvis, you look at the forces that come, you have an acceleration, deceleration force, and the patient is most likely sitting, and therefore this injury to the pelvis causes you know, shearing forces that actually rupture this, the, the, the two pelvic rima, the two pelvic rima are broken and therefore you have an impact on that area and therefore you have, you may have bone fragments causing a laceration to the, to the, pros, to the prostatic urethra or the, the membranous urethra. And most likely, the words I have seen, and I had an opportunity to open up in my earlier days, I was, I was gone to the emergency room and I was able to do, you know, explorations because uh, we had to do a little, we had to have emergencies. And what you find is interesting is that when you open this suprapubic area, what do you find? You find a huge hematoma. One, two. This huge hematoma lifts the bladder up, the prostatic, you know, the prostate of the bladder upwards, and actually rotates this this. Uh, the, prostat the prostatic urethra is no longer facing down after it is facing anteriorly in some cases. Mm -hmm. So there's nobody who is going to be able to characterize this patient at all. So don't try it. What you can do is what we shall discuss as we continue. But that is why all most 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 attempted characterizations, we always put the catheter in the blood clot. And you have a little bit of urine that was collecting the other blood. And then you say you go home to sleep, but then the patient eventually will pass urine. So this is what uh, we have talked about. And therefore, there is usually rotation. It can be anterior or lateral, but more it will be anterior rotation. Mm -hmm. so, so then uh, if you look at uh, this in some what I've mentioned, that makes it very difficult for you to calculate that pressure. And then there is also going to be displacement of the urethra. And you should then make it get that many things. So, to manage these patients, you have to try so that we don't just concentrate, like I mentioned, on that, just much appearances. But you have then to look at all the other organs involved. So as a urologist, if, if you are a general surgeon like some of us, you can do most of the other things. But in case there's urinary retention and there's other, the other organs involved, the best you can do is do a suprapubic, relieve the obstruction, and let the, whatever else has to be done be done. But if only it's a pelvic injury, you can do a retrogram, antigrade and retrograde to assess the, the distance the, the, the injury is called. And the, the American Association of Surgical Trauma, uh, from the SIU document has as these graduations, the type one that is just a confusion, the type two is a stretch injury, and the type three is partial disruption. And if I find for example like the first three would just be next slide, would just be conservative treatment. But when you look at the type fours where you have complete disruption and the urethra is about two centimeters, you may have to do what you call urethra realignment. In actual fact, the, in the earlier days, we did not know actually what we were doing. We did not know what to call it, but you, you went in and found that uh, you had a patient with a fracture. What did you do? You have opened, you can see a blood, a huge hematoma. You evacuate the hematoma and also put a catheter in the urethra and then uh, put an supracubic and leave the patient. That is what urethral alignment actually means. And uh, what you can do now and what it can be done now, if you look at all this next slide, is to, as you look at that, that anatomy, you see now you have disrupted at this at the membrane as this one. This point has gone up. The other one is left down. So if you put in a catheter inside there and then uh, you, you leave it for about a few weeks, then you'll be able to 
to achieve quite a number of uh, results that you would not have achieved if you just let the hematoma accumulate and then heal by, by, by process because you can be able to bridge the gap by putting a, a catheter early and then allowing healing to occur early. So, so the question is, you left for alignment. When do you do it? You see, if you have had a fracture pelvis and you are, you are able to do endoscopy and put the catheter, you can. But if you are not able, you can delay for maybe a, a, a you can delay to avoid that heavy bleeding. And uh, how long do you delay? You can delay for one week, a few days, so that the hematoma is not, the patient is not actively bleeding. You can put a telescope in this patient, and if you did that, then you can be able to put in a catheter in. And if you do that, then you minimize the chances of getting a very long stricture that you cannot manage. And uh, why do you, why, and then you can keep the catheter for four weeks, then remove it. Then after that, you can do your, your cystograms and then see what happens. Why do you want the benefits? Of course, when you put the catheter, there's less, you, you have less clot in the urethra, and uh, you have a shorter stricture, and later on, it will be easier to access this, this urethra. Case reports, we have one 65-year-old male with a fracture pelvis, also a fracture, t fracture tibia, with, and uh, when we did that, we did a cystoscopy, and uh, we were able to put in a catheter. We had put a suprapubic, but when after one week we were able to put a, a, a urethral catheter, and after six weeks we moved the catheter. And this patient, I even thought you would not void, but after six, after the six weeks, the guy was voiding very well. And now we have done three years, and we still have not had to reconstruct this urethral at all. And of course, he has erectile dysfunction because of the injuries, but. This is being managed the PD5. The next one was a, a young male who was run over by a vehicle with a pelvic ring. He had, he had, uh, this is uh, a this young man, you can see the fracture, or one fracture there, another one here, there's another one there, and another one across there. This is the bladder, and you can see this. You can see you have even no urethra down here. Next slide. He was, of course, you can see there's contrast leak even to the lumbar area, it actually like, uh, there was contrast leak and it was uh, the wound and the lumbar, right lumbar region, all leaking, next time. And uh, we, when we, when we, when we, we, we did, after one week, we were able to, to characterize this patient and uh, to align the urethra. And when we went to do the urethroplasty, the because I was a long stretcher, we were able to access it, you know, easily, without uh, having to, mobilize the too much. So this is good for us. The, the next, the, that case uh, is we did recently, and uh, it was compressed between two vehicles, and uh, this one we were able to do it within six hours, and uh, we see, we'll show you the X-rays next week. That is the CT scan showing you the, the pelvic ring, you can see fracture there, fracture there, another one there, and the fracture, the, the pelvic ring is actually intact. And these are the fractures that we are talking about. You can see the displacement is minimal in this case. Next one. And this is the urethra after the alignment. You can see that the bladder neck has the prostatic urethra. And that is the medical series. That is the difference. That is the distance that, that we have. And this now, when we did it, when we came to do, uh, to do a urethroplasty, it was easier for us. And maybe what you can do, of course, we are told not to put traction on the catheters. But when you put the catheter in, it is good to pull like you are reducing a fracture. Reduce, pull a retro, you know, you know, pull this catheter retro, into, you, know, and, you know, put a bit of traction, not continuous. Put a bit of traction that you are joining the two, the above, the, the prostatic apex, and the membranes, and see how much you can bridge that gap. Maybe that will work very well for us. So this is what we achieved, and when we went to repair it, it was okay. This gentleman does not have an erectile dysfunction. His erection is good. And uh, we are told that uh, even when you do urethroplasty, the reasons why you get you get erectile dysfunction is not because you are done urethroplasty in that area. The nerves are not being injured at the same time of the, of the fracture, then you don't get erectile dysfunction. So what should we say? What, is, what, what are we telling the audience? That uh, early urethral alignment should be the, the, the management of choice early, because it allows early return to work if you are going to treat this patient at least four weeks, you have done your urethral plastic. And it is not the cause of erectile dysfunction. And uh, the complications of pelvic fractures, especially very long structures, which we had in the past, which are very hard you know, to even to dissect, they are stone hard. You can uh, avoid them because if you are aligned like this, and like this patient, 
when we removed the catheter, he was actually able to go in for some time. But it was, he was training, so we knew he would, eventually it was going to block. There is no room for visual internal urethrotomy in these patients because they are f looking at fibrous tissue. And you know, if you look at the histopathology, if you look at the, the if you look at the histopathology of the stricture, what is it? It is actually fiber. It is actually elastic fibers formed in all directions. So there is no way you are going to put a a urethral to the knife and cut, and then you expect it not to come back. It will come back. It must be mucosa to mucosa so that you can get good alignment. So this is taken from the National Geographic.